Hi, I'm Danforth Prince with an advanced preview of Blood Moon's exciting 2017 reading list. It contains two hot celebrity biographies, each with insights and revelations exposed for the first time. The tantalizing subjects are two legends of the screen, one male, one female. The first is Lana Turner, Hearts and Diamonds Take All, an expose prepared for the 20th anniversary of her death. She was once hailed as the most desirable woman on the planet, our second bio is devoted to the publishing industry's first complete rundown of the infamous life of Rock Hudson. Its title is Erotic Fire, exposing this box office champion and super stud once branded as the sexiest man alive. Our book on Lana is scheduled for release on Valentine's Day and answers the question of why she dazzled audiences for 50 years and why she enjoys a worldwide cult following today. As she herself proclaimed, I will be forever young and forever beautiful on the screen, eternally alluring. In 1937, in the crime drama, They Won't Forget, a teenage Lana in a form-fitting woolen sweater walked down the sidewalk of a small southern town. She's about to be murdered. At the film's premiere, a young man from the rear of the audience rose up and shouted, Look at those knockers! It was the birth of a legend. She was dubbed ever after America's Sweater Girl. Lana went on to become the pinup girl of World War II, vying with Betty Grable and with Rita Hayworth for the title. From the battlefields of France to remote islands on the Pacific theater of war, Lana's pictures, sometimes described as a wet dream fantasy, adorned GI locker rooms. During the war years, she ruled as the queen of MGM, a blonde bombshell box office phenomenon. Eva Braun, Hitler's mistress, and Evita Perón, dictator of Argentina, used Lana as their role models, as did the future Marilyn Monroe. Lana's greatest role, a soap opera come to life, was her personal off-screen saga, a sizzler of smoldering passions. Quote, I had the courage to lead a life that other beautiful women only dream about, she admitted. Her lovers re read like a who's who of Hollywood, including such matinee idols as Clark Gable, Robert Taylor, Errol Flynn, John Garfield, Spencer Tracy, and Tyrone Power, whom she defined as the love of my life. She seduced a young Ronald Reagan in 1938, and a young Navy lieutenant just back from the Pacific, John F. Kennedy, in 1946. In one year alone, she dated 150 servicemen she met at the Hollywood Canteen, telling Betty Davis, I want them to have a memory to take away with them of what they're fighting for. Even the billionaire aviator, Howard Hughes, winged in to fly away with her. Mickey Rooney impregnated her, leading to the first of many abortions in her future. She even managed to get Desi Arnaz before Lucille Ball moved in. Her best friends were Ava Gardner and Elizabeth Taylor, but that didn't stop Lana from seducing their husbands, Frank Sinatra and Richard Burton. Joan Crawford and Barbara Stanwyck were not so forgiving of Lana sneaking off with their husbands. Lana made many classics, including the film noir, the Postman Always Rings Twice, followed by The Bad and the Beautiful, Imitation of Life, and Peyton Place. When many actresses of her age had slowed down, Lana was still making pictures and still seducing her co-stars, including Sean Connery, the future James Bond. She and Dean Martin together answered the question, who's got the action? From her tsunami of scandals, none was more notorious than the murder of her lover and hustler, Johnny Stompanato, the bodyguard of the gangster, Mickey Cohen. Stompanato was stabbed to death in Lana's house, allegedly by her teenage daughter, Cheryl Crane. The real murderer is identified in Hearts and Diamonds Take All. Although Lana couldn't step forward as the killer because it would have destroyed her career, the murder made her even hotter at the Hollywood box office. Hearts and Diamonds Take All turns the spotlight on that legend of yesterday who inspired and entertained the greatest generation. The shocking details of her seven marriages, including one to movie stars and Lex Barker, is exposed with unblushing candor. Once dubbed the Queen of the Night, the femme fatale of Hollywood's golden age shimmers on every page. The title of her first film said it all, They Won't Forget. But wait, there's more! In this case, the oversized boulder that Blood Moon will release on the 4th of July when we plan to set off some explosives in honor of Rock Hudson, a great American movie star and box office champion. Its title, 
inspired by the hundreds of Hollywood players he shared pillow talk with, is Rock Hudson Erotic Fire, prepared in commemoration of the 30th anniversary of his tragic death and based on more than 300 interviews over the decades. It presents in riveting detail the story of the man who had everything and nothing. From 1957 to 1965, Rock Hudson reigned as the most popular movie star in the world, the hero of dozens of He-Man adventures, causing millions of women to swoon at his virile image. But no story was more heroic than his own personal drama. A breathtakingly good-looking, muscled, charming, classy, well-spoken young man who stood six foot four, survived an abused childhood, a stint in the Navy, and a job as a sexy truck driver before landing in Hollywood. He confessed, On the road to my horizon, I had to wear out a lot of casting couches before I got launched. He arrived there in 1950, during the twilight of Hollywood's golden age, an era which produced a new generation of movie stars. James Dean, Elizabeth Taylor, Natalie Wood, Montgomery Clift, Troy Donahue, Sal Mineo, Dennis Hopper, and Marilyn Monroe. How did Rock handle this onslaught of competition? I screwed every one of them, he said. His breakthrough came in the 1954 remake of that seminal tearjerker, Magnificent Obsession. His co-star, Jane Wyman, the embittered ex-wife of Ronald Reagan, fell in love with him and wanted to marry him. He refused. In 1956, he released one of that decade's greatest hits, Giant, in which he was cast as a patriarchal cattle rancher in Ed DeFerber's sweeping saga of Texas oil barons. He, he invited his co-stars, Elizabeth Taylor and James Dean, into his bed. Off the screen, he had many sexual liaisons and affairs and seduced and ignored gender. He bedded many famous women, including Tallulah Bankhead, of all people, Joan Crawford, she invited him for a nude swim, and that historic bombshell, Marilyn Monroe. Following in Lana Turner's footsteps, he also seduced such fading matinee idols as Errol Flynn and Tyrone Power. Publicly, at least, as a means of camouflaging his homosexuality, he uttered such quotes to the press as, When I go to bed, I think of Lana and can't go to sleep. He also entered a sham marriage to a closeted lesbian, Phyllis Gates, who later blackmailed him. Near the tragic end of his captivating life, it was revealed in Paris that he had AIDS. The world was shocked, as were legions of his fans. At the White House, Nancy Reagan urged her husband to break his presidential silence on this rapidly spreading disease, an epidemic that would soon engulf millions worldwide. Hudson's death had far-reaching consequences, shattering many people's misconceptions about gay men and signaling to hundreds of other actors to remain in the closet as a means of continuing their work in an unforgiving business. Hudson's death eventually triggered millions of dollars of charity donations as a means of combating this horrible plague. On his deathbed, Hudson said, I hope this will be my shining hour. Erotic Fire is unexpurgated, filled with gripping details, a sympathetic yet revelation-packed expose of some of the myths and contradictions of entertainment industry history. It's also the portrait of a deeply troubled star who could not live life on his own terms and who had to conceal his love and desires from the world. Ultimately, it becomes a ruthless tale about the price of fame. Rock and Lana, two great Americans, two hot biographies, available on Valentine's Day and on the 4th of July, respectively, from Blood Moon Productions. Thanks for taking a look at them, and happy reading to all of you. <laughs>